Kyle Shanahan now. Let's go to the losing team. And as I often say, the day after the Super Bowl, the Monday after the Super Bowl, as well as the Monday after the weekend's games to start week one are the two biggest overreaction Mondays of the NFL season. I always say the Monday in week one and the Monday after the Super Bowl. Those two sort of bookends the season to a certain degree. And the next day when the team loses the Super Bowl, in this case it's the 49ers, coach can't coach, quarterback's no good, and they'll never be back. Like it's, it's again, overreaction. With Kyle Shanahan, and I feared this, and I, for a minute last night after the game was over, I didn't think this, this would happen, but I was proven incorrectly again. I feared this would happen, that if the Niners lost on a close game, which it's hard to get much closer than that, that all of a sudden Kyle Shanahan is this playoff choker who doesn't know what he's doing and can't win the big game. All due respect, that's an idiotic take, and I'll tell you why. You can talk about 2016 when he was the offensive coordinator of the Atlanta Falcons, but the fact of the matter was this team did score 28 points. Now, seven of those, albeit came on a pick six off Brady, but was it Brady scoring on Kyle Shanahan's defense to come back in that game? No, that was Dan Quinn's defense who Brady went up and down the field on in that iconic Super Bowl in 2016. Was it Kyle Shanahan's fault that he dialed up the perfect throw from Jimmy G to Emmanuel Sanders and to win the Super Bowl against Kansas City in 2019? And Jimmy G straight up overthrew Emmanuel Sanders and what could have won the game? It's a perfect call by Kyle. Did what he did his job. Is it Kyle Shanahan's fault that in 2021 NFC title game, the interception goes through the arms of Tart? I think it was the safety uh, for, for the Niners at the time. And the Rams take advantage, come back and win the game. When he's, by the way, in those three games at a massive, massive quarterback disadvantage. Matt Ryan was great that year. Ain't Tom Brady. Newsflash. And then Jimmy Garoppolo is not Mahomes, and Jimmy Garoppolo is not Stafford. And with all due respect, more on Purdy later. Purdy, who played pretty well yesterday, all things considered. Purdy's obviously not Mahomes. I thought Kyle was clever. I thought Kyle dialed up some really smart. I mean, the trick play, Jawan Jennings to McCaffrey. I mean, perfect. What I love about Kyle Shanahan yesterday, and then I'll talk about the overtime situation people are talking about. What I loved about what Kyle Shanahan did yesterday is the knock on him is like, man, he just doesn't stick to his his guns and blah, blah, blah. Kyle Shanahan says, you know what? If we lose this game, we're going down swinging because you can't beat a dynasty unless you go down, unless you absolutely take your best shot. That's what Philadelphia did in one of the gutsiest calls in Super Bowl history. Philly special, fourth and goal from the one against the Patriots, the favored Patriots. Backup quarterback Nick Foles. They run Philly special. The rest is history. Eagles go on to win the Super Bowl because they were aggressive. Atlanta played it safe. Rams played it safe. Seahawks, well, Seahawks were too aggressive at the one-yard line. That's a different conversation. There's a difference between being aggressive and being reckless. Kyle Shanahan was, was aggressive. Went for it. By the way, how about this? Down 13-10, fourth quarter. Got three points in his back pocket, we think. Moody had an up-and-down night, the rookie kicker for the 49ers from Michigan. Goes for him fourth down. Perfectly designed play. Beautifully executed. Purdy to Kittle. They end up uh, scoring a touchdown that drive. So the game was well called. The game was well managed. Clock management, the only thing I would say about Kyle is he didn't call timeout late, uh, late in the first half when Kansas City got their first points. Maybe an opportunity for the Niners to get points, but are we sure that wasn't some of... I just don't want Purdy to make a mistake here and really kill our momentum. We can go in up 10-3. You know, again, difference between reckless and aggressive. Kyle Shanahan went down swinging. Now, as far as the overtime situation, which what I'm referring to is the new rules, where, and you can thank the Buffalo Bills for that. The Buffalo Bills, lots of the Chiefs, you know, couldn't stop Mahomes in 13 seconds. And wind to the NFL, oh my God, it's unfair. And so they got the rules changed with overtime. Instead of if the first team scores a touchdown, game's over. Now it's doesn't matter what the first team does unless they have a, unless the other team gets a defensive touchdown. Both teams get the ball regardless of what happens. Unless, again, there's a defensive touchdown. So Kyle Shanahan sort of admitted it, didn't know the rules. And there, there were multiple 49ers players who alluded to the fact, I think Juszczyk mentioned this, Juszczyk, the fullback, that they weren't aware of the overtime rules at that point in the game, which that's a knock on the coach. That's an absolutely fair knock on Kyle Shanahan. Because in that situation, and I tweeted it, I, I, this is not revisionist history. This is not, oh, the, you know, you go back and, and because it didn't work, now you criticize them, armchair coaching or quarterbacking, however you want to look at that. But um, I tweeted this 
if I had this tweet right here. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I tweeted. This is at uh, 10.21 p.m. This is right when, when the Niners won the toss and elected to get the ball. I said, wow, I think I would have deferred and allow yourself to have the ball last. That could come back to bite the 49ers. Because my belief is, and Andy Reid sort of defended Kyle Shan after the game. He's like, you know, I don't think there's a right answer. And, and it's a new formula, new strategy. Coaches, the smart ones, which of course Reid and Shanahan both qualify as that, will adapt accordingly. My belief is, if you win the toss, kick to Kansas City, whatever happens, if they score a touchdown, hey, you're still alive. New overtime rules. I'm going to go down, and my goal is, we're going to score, and we're going to go for two in the win because we're not giving the ball back to Mahomes because we know what's going to happen. He's just going to drive right back down the field, and Harrison Butker is going to walk it off because Butker was great last night and all season long. That, that, would, that would be my knock on Shannon. But even in that situation, even that almost worked. Purdy was good on third down, and it, you know what it took? Down in the red zone, they have a beautifully designed play. Purdy's going to have Juwan Jennings wide open, or he's going to have Brandon Ayuk streaking across the back of the end zone wide open. But guess who screws it up? The best defensive player uh, probably in the game with respect to Bosa Armstead and, and uh, Fred Warner as well and Chase Young, Chris Jones. Chris Jones doing almost identically what he did against the Buffalo Bills in, three weeks ago. Remember, Josh Allen's got Khalil Shakir wide open in the end zone and Chris Jones pushes Deion Dawkins into Josh Allen to force an errant throw. And it ends up being maybe the play of the game for Kansas City. This play... Purdy's going to roll out to his right. Jennings is going to be open. If Jennings isn't open, Ayuk is even more open to Jawan Jennings' left. Chris Jones gets in, blows the whole play up, and the Niners get a field goal out of it. So you know what thwarted Kyle Shanahan's plan? It wasn't bad coaching. Wasn't wasn't even his quarterback couldn't make the play. It's hard to make the play when Chris Jones is right in your face like that. A great player made a great play, and that's what stalled it. Again, I would have kicked to Kansas City if they score a touchdown, then my goal is we're going to score a touchdown and we're going to go for two in the win. It's like, that's what I would have done. But at the end of the day, this if, if your take on that game was Kyle Shanahan blew it, with all due respect, I don't know what game you're watching. And even to a larger degree, sort of tying it back into my first take, my first segment, let's be real, folks. This was not a game. The Niners were the losing team. This was not a game where someone on the Niners blew it. Shanahan didn't blow it. Purdy didn't blow it. Debo, McCaffrey was great. Niners defense, I mean, did the Niners defense blow it or did Patrick Mahomes do Patrick Mahomes things? Go eight for eight in overtime, run for the first down and fourth down, had another scramble to get them down. I believe that one, that run got them down the red zone late in overtime. They got beat by one of the greatest players we've ever seen in professional sports. That's what happened. I mean, do we fault... Do we fault, again, those Jazz teams in the 90s and those Phoenix Suns teams and the Supersonics? Do we, do we knock those Cavs teams in the 2010s or the Celtics in the 2020s? No, they ran to Steph Curry. That's what happened. Do we knock those Pacers teams or those uh, some of those other Boston teams because they kept or those Atlanta teams that kept running into LeBron? No, they ran to LeBron. Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy did about all they could have. The Niners defense throughout that, I mean, they took the ball from Mahomes. They took the ball from Pacheco. Got two turnovers. Nobody, listen, we live in a society where if something happens, it's somebody's fault and we got to throw all the blame on them. That's what Twitter was designed for. Even more so now with X. Um, nobody's at fault. They just got beat by an all-time great. That's what happened. And so I think if your take on that game was Shanahan blew it, I don't know what game you watched. Shanahan was brilliant. When you're confusing Steve Spagnolo at times in the game, you're doing something right. And Spags was awesome. With his third down blitzes on Purdy, he was great. But in general, uh, Shanahan coached a phenomenal game. And if the knock on him is he can't beat Mahomes, guess what? Nobody except for Burrow and Brady can. So there's no knock on that. Okay? And do, by the way, by the way, just to a large degree, large, not a large degree, larger, larger conversation. Zach Taylor... Only two coaches to beat Mahomes in the playoffs. We talk about Brady and Burrow, the two quarterbacks, two coaches, Belichick and Zach Taylor. Is Zach Taylor all of a sudden a better coach than Kyle Shanahan? No, he just had Joe Burrow. <laughs> That's the difference. That changes everything. And so 
I did not think this was a Shanahan issue whatsoever. Not even close. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. And be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.